Good evening and a warm welcome to your platform Speak Out India where you get to speak your mind out. I'm Akshay Tandon and tonight we will talk about two issues. First up, what has led to our police becoming so insensitive towards women? Are protectors of law turning into predators? And secondly, we'll speak about the Thane building collapse and the bunt call by political parties. How can political parties support unauthorized construction? Well, first up, we'll talk about the case coming in from Aligarh, where another shocking incident has come to light of police brutality, where police have beaten up protesters in Aligarh, who were agitating against the rape and murder of a six-year-old girl. These visuals clearly show the police beating up people, pushing women around, and generally lording it over the protesters. Police even lati charged women protesters and dragged them away from the protest site. The little girl had gone missing on Wednesday night but when the family went to the police station to complain the cops refused to file a complaint well let's also tell you that the Supreme Court's observations in the recent Tarantaran case where cops beat up a girl the Supreme Court had said our culture does not even allow us to push a woman there can be no justification to hit a woman in fact, the visuals that you see on your screens are the anger that's spilling out on the streets of Aligarh solely because of a case of rape and murder. The news goes that a six-year-old girl was allegedly raped and murdered in Aligarh on Thursday, that's today, that sparked off these violent protests by locals and prompting police to use force in which at least seven people have been injured. Many women, as you can see on your screens, were also largely charged and the police brutality can be seen how they used those lathis on women and children onto the streets as the anger spilled over the rape and murder of this six-year-old child so the questions we are asking you tonight on speak out india have protectors of law become predators have women become soft targets for police's ire what action should be taken against brutal cops our telephone lines are open. Do call us on 0120. Tell us what you think. 436-9420 is the number. Joining me at the moment are my colleagues Jaskirat Singh Bhava from the newsroom and a political editor Priya Sehgal. Priya, when we look at these visuals of what's happened in Aligarh or Tarantaran, or for that matter the story we played out yesterday in Ludhiana, what is going on in our society? What is going on in our society and also the state of UP where we see the lawlessness uh, is becoming a big issue that you know the chief minister can't avoid it anymore. He keeps blaming the previous government but now I think he has to somewhere step in and take the brunt of it. Apart from that helpless women and children getting beaten up and who are these people? They themselves are victims. You know uh, today uh, I was just talking to one of our reporters, crime reporters. He was telling me he went to Safsajan hospital where the rape victim, where another rape victim from Delhi is uh, lying there. Her mother was not allowed in again by whom the security guards so our protectors are itself are turning on us and whom do we go to for help absolutely what sort of an action can we really expect against such uh, protectors of law that are turning predators it's very difficult uh, to answer that question because you know the supreme court's observations might say of what our culture really is but on grounds really little impact uh, as we see this case today priya Absolutely. I mean, there is only talk from the politicians, but nothing really transcends to the ground. I mean, who do we hold accountable? That's the question I want to ask. Since we are discussing the Aligarh case today, whom do we go to for help? Is it going to be Akhilesh Yadav? Is it going to be the state DIG? Or is the center going to step in? That's the question that I think everybody wants to know. In fact, let's go across to our colleague now, Jaskira, who is joining us for more. Jaskira, take us through the irony of the entire situation, where on one hand, across the country, whether it's the case in Taran Taran or perhaps the one in Ludhiana or the one in Aligarh, shows us brutality against women. And on the other hand, the Supreme Court has some guidelines to give. All right. Well, we'll try and connect back with Jaskirat in a few more moments. But you're right, Priya. The question that we need to ask tonight is, what is wrong with the police? More than protecting our women and children and us, that, look at that visual of how women are being slammed and thrown onto the streets as they are protesting against what? Protesting against a rape of a six-year-old girl who was then murdered and dumped in a garage. Who will be accountable? As you very correctly pointed out, when Samarwadi party came back to power, people said it's the party of goons that is coming back to power. Look at that visual again we saw of that little girl who was with her mother who was being beaten up. 
very very sorry sir about that isn't it priya absolutely i think akhilesh i heard him uh, speaking a while ago he was saying that the cops have been suspended you know that has his reaction to every incident that takes place he has to do more than this suspension and inquiry that we heard of committees that are looking into inquiries going on we want to see some real visible action i mean how long can you go on he's already losing his mandate and it will be a very sad day if he doesn't take a firmer step in fact uh, I mean, why are we blaming him? There has been no action. Look at our own Delhi this thing. We got a rape bill out. We got a firm this thing. Politicians got a lot of time on television. They spoke a lot of hot air. But then what happened? The rapes are still carrying on in Delhi, in UP, all over the town. So in fact, who do we go to? Whom do we ask for help? We go to the police, and this is what happens. So at Absol the end of the day, our protectors are not really doing their job. Then whom do we go to? Absolutely. In fact, if we can just uh, show the. The the other story that uh, came in from Lodana, uh, Jaskirat is back with us. Jaskirat, if you could talk us through the question that I asked you earlier, that how ironic the situation is. On one hand, the Supreme Court is giving us guidelines about how to treat women in our society. On the second, we look at these shocking visuals coming in from Aligarh. Absolutely, no lessons learned over here. Now, the Supreme Court is of the opinion that these, this situation would not have arisen had their own guidelines given half a decade earlier. The Prakash Singh judgment on police reforms had been followed. The state governments have failed to take any initiative as far as those guidelines were concerned. And this is the resulting situation. Uh, this is the manifestation of the lack of the implementation of those police reforms. The Supreme Court said in as many words, this is a bench headed by Justice Singhvi, which had taken some more cognizance of the Tarantaran police brutality incident. And the Supreme Court said in as many words, that our culture does not allow even pushing a woman physically. The central government in their submission to the Supreme Court via their Attorney General said that there is no excuse, no justification for hitting a woman even if she is being abusive against a public servant like the police officers in Taran Taran. So this is the, the opinion amongst the higher echelons of the uh, judiciary as well as the government. However, it's not trickling down to the lower level of the executive, which is the lower level, lower ranking police officials who are over there interacting with the public because it's clearly reflecting uh, as a police brutality, a case of police brutality. So it, it, one has to try and bridge the gap over here amongst yes. the policy and the actual implementation, which is actually not happening. Okay, I'm going to request you, Jaskrit and Priya, to please stay on with us. I want to go across to Dr. Goswami, who's joining us from New Delhi. Dr. Goswami, what's your reaction today? What do you want to see on Speak Out India when you look at such a shocking and appalling visuals coming in from Aligarh? Yeah, it seems as if the police is basically an organized gunda and that is why the things are happening like this. The once they get into the police, the once they get into the uh, political uniform, then they become different citizens. They are not the common citizen. That's why the things are happening. They are not considering them the common man. They are considering they are super cop. All right. And it is say, equal to the British uh, rule earlier it was in India. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Goswami, a point taken. You are saying that the police are actually acting like gundas on the streets and thus we see cases like these. Thanks very much. We also have Ms. Ranjana Kumari, a social activist, uh, joining us over the telephone line for more. Ms. Kumari, you know, Uttar Pradesh time and again has come under a lot of criticism when it comes to law and order situation. But today, this visual of how the cops in broad daylight unabashedly beating women left, right and center. What's your reaction? Well, this is brutal force. This is not a force uh, looks like uh, protecting the people in the state. These are the people who are trained to be, uh, you know, protectors. And now they have become totally, totally insensitive, inhuman. And, you know, instead of giving some kind of assurance to the family who has lost a six-year-old child, who has been raped, brutalized and killed, instead of, you know, when they complain, instead of trying to search for the child, they... They did not do their job. They be and on, on the top of that, when the family came to demand justice, they are brutalizing the family. I think this is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, recent past, they had locked up a ten-year-old girl, and Supreme yes. Court wanted a, a you know kind of statement from them. The UP police is totally looks like out of uh, hand of the uh, people. The state should take responsibility. Chief yes. Minister should intervene immediately. And this is I heard this is a senior officer who who was beating the mother of the. Child who has died. I mean, they are. I don't know what kind of uh, training they are right. going through. You know, it's, it's, it's the sensitivity that is required to be taught to the police. Miss Kumari, I'm going to request you please stay with me on the telephone line. We have my political editor Priya Saigal who wants to ask you a question. Stay with us, Priya and Miss Kumari. We have callers from across the country also calling in on the show. Gaurav Verma joins us from New Delhi and Mr. Paresh from Gujarat. Mr. Paresh, stay with us. Gaurav, have your say first. Good evening, sir. Good evening.
Uh, sir, my name is Gaurav Verma, calling from New Delhi, GK1, sir. sir. I was totally shocked hearing this news, sir, that Aligarh uh, police is doing such a, uh, such a uh, bad thing. I'm so sorry to say, use these this our bad words, but due to, uh, these police officers are really bad. They should take care of women, uh, pe women and they are, take, they are beating them. It's totally shocking news and it's a really bad thing that they have done it. They should be suspended and they should be not be working anymore in this duty. Is this the way to treat women? Uh, they are doing this lovey and all this stuff. It's bullshit thing. Right, Gaurav. Agree with you. Extremely angry with what you see on the streets. Mr. Paresh from Gujarat, go ahead. बहुत कानून होने के बावजूद भी छोटी-छोटी बातों पे न्याय के लिए पब्लिक को प्रोटेस्ट करना पड़ता है. प्रोटेस्ट पर दमन होता है. ये बार-बार हमारे हिंदुस्तान में देखा जा रहा है. बिल्कुल, बिल्कुल. ऐसा क्यों होता है? उसको उसको क्यों नहीं रोक सकते? पुलिस ऐसा करती है हर जगह का तरन तारण का देखा हमने लुधियाना का देखा हर जगह हम देख रहे हैं पूरे भारत देश के अंदर ये परिस्थिति ऐसा क्यों है तो मैं 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 कहना चाहता हूँ कि पार्टी लेस पॉलिटिक्स की जरूरत है अच्छे लोग चुन के आए ये बहुत जरूरी बात बन गई है जिसकी सरकार जो बनती है पब्लिक की सरकार की जरूरत है ना कि पार्टियों की सरकार की जरूरत है ओके okay. ये सिस्टम चेंज होगा जब देश के अंदर कुछ सुधार आ पाएगा ये आपका मानना है कि पोलिटिकल पार्टी होनी नहीं चाहिए और तब देश में सुधार आएगा मिस्टर परेश थैंक्स वेरी मच प्रिया यू वॉन्ट टू आस क्वेश्चन टू मिस कुमारी गो हेल्प प्लीज Yeah, ma'am. I just wanted to ask you one question. We've been seeing so many incidents in the last few days. Which state would you say has the worst track record of handling women and children, the atrocities against women and children? Well, Priya, one after the other, we see worse situation. Whether it is the Jharkhand, where we learnt about this, where it is the Chhattisgarh, where even seven year to twelve year girls kept in school were raped and brutalized. This is what happened in Punjab, but UP, I think, is a total jungle raj. I was in Varanasi just day before yesterday, yes, and I can tell you, and I had gone to attend to such an incident. Miss Kumari, let's get some reaction from the SSP. Let's get some reaction from the SSP of Aligarh. Mr. Amit Pathak is with us. Miss Kumari, do stay on. Mr. Pathak, what response to the kind of treatment the police give the women today? Ah, it is that, uh, not taken in good light, yes. and they have exceeded their powers. And uh, we have taken action against two, and we have sent the report for the third. Okay, what action have you taken, sir? Uh, the two uh, people we have identified who are shown on the footage, the MFSA have been found to be exceeding their limits. Yes. And uh, they have been uh, put under suspension. And uh, regarding the circle officer, uh, DIG Aligarh Range has sent a report to the ADG Law and Order UP. Okay, Mr. Pata, who gave them the orders for this brutality? They certainly must have got some orders how to control the mob. No, they were exercising their power to control the mob which were pelting stones. Yes. But uh, evidently, as seen from the footages, they have uh, exceeded their powers and for which we are taking the action. But Mr. Pata, we also hear that the uh, mob got angry because the woman whose daughter has been raped and murdered actually went to the police to file a complaint which was refused. And thus there was anger on the streets. Please some throw some more light. What's the police's version? No, no, no this is not the uh, correct version. Okay. 3.30 uh, in the early morning hours, we received a complaint on 100 number that a girl is missing. Okay. So immediately the night officer of that area attended it and they all started searching for the body which was found around two hours later from that, 100 meters away from the scene, uh, house of the girl. Okay. And uh, yeah, then uh, the proceedings for the investigations were on. Okay. And uh, in that uh, process, uh, some experience got um, uh, accumulated over there and they started pelting the stones. Okay. And they started damaging the vehicles also which were passing but from that area. Mr. Pathak, would you say this anger on the street is unjustified by the people? Why would the people be provoked to do something like that? Uh, I, I would like to say uh, that the people were provoked by some miscreants over there who were even not aware, many of them were not even aware what has gone wrong. It was just an accumulation, uh, instant accumulation and there was a lot of building material that was uh, present uh, at their disposal. Okay. And uh, some experience, some very, we can see young kids also, yes. they started pelting the stones. So okay. But also Mr. Patak, you said you've taken action against two policemen and the visuals you are playing out, I can see very clearly there's a group of policemen that actually beat up a young girl and when I say a group, there are at least five, six of them present over there. So why do you take uh, action against only two when there is a huge number of policemen involved? Yes, uh, this is this is what we have concluded from our uh, from the video footages. Rest the inquiry will take place, and whosoever will be found guilty will be uh, taken to task. My last question, sir. Today you suspend these two policemen. What guarantee that the police is not going to be insensitive again? Is a suspension mere? Uh, is, is 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 it just a mere suspension? Something really going to help on ground? Is, will it make a difference? 
this that is of course the first step that we must take place to uh, first uh, disciplinary action and we are trying our best to sensitize the people and a lot of police force is sensitized also but some extra incidences here and there are uh, being reported uh, and come to light and they bring a bad name to the department we are taking action and we are okay. sensitizing people Okay, yes, good to know you took an action against them, Mr. Pada. But what about the rapist? Where has the case gone? We've forgotten the the victim's family that's going through this trauma. What have you done for that uh, uh, victim? Yes, uh, the, you are very right. Uh, the main case is the murder of that girl, and uh, we are uh, doing whatever we can. Uh, we have constituted teams for it. We are also in touch with the uh, other districts where such incidences have taken place, and if some particular group has uh, done it, so we are uh, the investigation is on. Okay. The post-mortem is being conducted and we'll take whatever investigative problem which I need to be Mr. taken. Mr. Patak, may I ask you a question? Uh, I'm Priya Sahagal with NewsX. What other steps will you take to sensitize your police force so that these things don't happen again? Because suspension, as we all know, is not really a big rap on the knuckles. Are you going to sensitize them? Are they, is there a mindset that has to be changed? Does the chief minister need to be more proactive? What should be done? No, we are doing, we are actually taking these steps. Uh, in Aligarh, we have installed uh, CCTV cameras also, which is a pilot project being run here. And where with the public reception counter uh, are also monitored by senior officers online directly. So we are just having a trial run of the project. So we are doing everything we can. And uh, uh, I would like to bring to notice that fairly a large uh, section of the police force is, is sensitized about the whole thing. But then some 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 uh, mishappenings uh, uh, have taken place, which has brought up bad But too many mishappenings in UP, Mr. Patak. We are trying to do uh, our best. I would like to assure that such okay. kind of things would be uh, on a decline. And, and, and Mr. Badak, I'm going to request you as I wrap up this conversation with you, please have a look at NewsX and take a look at those visuals that I'm asking you to, where there are at least seven or eight men in khaki surrounding these two girls, one of them in a pink salwar kameez, which is being nudged and brutally hit. Please take a look at these visuals. I can assure you, not just two people, many policemen need to be uh, uh, need to get suspended and action needs to be taken against them. Mr. Patak, thanks very much for coming on NewsX and speaking your mind out with us. Well, we have few more callers joining us on the show. We have Hayat from Delhi and Naseer from Srinagar. Thanks very much for holding on to both of you. Naseer, why don't you have your say on Speak Out India? Hello. Yes, go ahead, Naseer. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I just want to say that these visuals are really shocking. Yes, Nasir, yeah. indeed. They are extremely shocking and appalling. Yeah, well, least I, to say. I, would li I would like to add, uh, last time when NewsX reported it, I guess it was from Punjab. And if, if you see those who are supposed to be guardians are turning into something else, but a phenomenon in other countries is completely different. If you see in other foreign countries, whenever there is a protest or something else going on, and police comes, people thank and they say that yes. God, police has come. Of course, and that's what we are discussing tonight. Different. Have protectors of law turned into predators. Thanks very much, Nasir. I have to go across to other callers as well. Ahmed joins us from Srinagar. Ahmed, go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I am Ahmed Shabir from Kashmir. Yes. And, sir, I, want, I, am, uh, I heard this uh, shocking news that the police has beaten the women who are, who are protesting on the rap that has taken place in yes. and uh, uh, with the mind of a uh, little girl, child. Yes. So it is very condemnable action. Yes. Definitely, sir. Yes, Emma. So why you. the government is not taking the strong steps? Yes, that's the question we're putting out. What is the chief minister doing? How come we cannot sensitize our policemen towards the women especially? What is the government doing? Perhaps the centre also maybe needs to step in. Ahmed, thanks very much. I want to bring in Priya once again. Priya, we have this conversation. Mr. Badagu assures us that nothing of this sort is going to happen ever again. But you know, this is... Would you, would you want to believe in SSP today? Or is this just mere lip service? No, it's mere lip service because he also added that, you know, that uh, there is uh, some kind of sensitization program that is going on and this happened right in the middle of that program. So then what credibility, the solution itself is not good enough. This happened right in the middle of the solution to the crisis. So he has nothing else to offer. So what can we believe in then? Right. Do we have uh, Miss Ranjana Kumari still with us over the phone line? Okay, we'll try and connect with uh, Miss Ranjana Kumari once again. But let me go across to Mr. Bashir from Srinagar. Mr. Bashir, go ahead. Speak your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cop who is doing this act. Yes. Firstly, he has his uh, tested spec spectacle. He is not able to see major and minor. You see, the act he is uh, doing is very shameless, and I think he should lose immediately terminate from the services. Right. 
Right, absolutely. Well, they have been suspended as of now, but is that really enough is the question we need to ask time and again, Priya, whether it was the example of Taran Taran, where those cops were mercilessly beating that woman in broad daylight because she had gone to complain that a truck driver was har harassing her. Or today is the case, today here. We've seen both cases have seen suspensions. The point really is, today they get suspended. But how does it really affect the other, uh, other community, other policemen together? They, they simply don't fear a suspension. No, and as you said, suspension is a mere rap on the knuckles. Suspension is nothing in today's world. There has to be a stricter action. They should be locked up. They should be beaten up. Something should be done unto them the way they are treating the others. Because this is a big credibility crisis. This is also a big letdown. You are going to someone to help and protect and that person turns on you. That's a big uh, show, this thing. That cannot be pardoned. And that actually needs to be treated as a crime. They Absolutely. have to be uh, uh, dealt with sternly. They have to be locked up. They have to be either beaten up. Some sterner message than a mere suspension has to go. Have, have policemen really turn into criminals is something we also need to ask. I'm going to go across to Rajpal who's joining us from Mumbai. Rajpal, go ahead, speak your mind out. Suspension for these people who are using the force, brutal force of the ladies, mm -hmm. unarmed ladies, mm -hmm. is nothing because in 2-3 months they will be again reinstated. Yes. Unless drastic action is taken and some of them are not, if they are not dismissed under section 311 of the constitution, where the police has the power, government, such people should be dismissed because you can openly see how they are behaving. Yes. Either they are not trained properly or they are deliberately doing it to suppress the facts. That is the reason this all is happening. All right, thanks very much. Step. Thanks very much, Mr. Rajpal. Of course, we expect we would like drastic action to be taken against such a, uh, erring policemen. I want to go across to Ms. Usha Rao from Bangalore. Mr. Rao, go ahead, speak your mind out. Oh, well, women seem to have become soft targets everywhere, you know, at home, in public places, at their workplaces, and most of all, they are the prime targets of the police these days. You know, when the protectors of law become lawbreakers, to whom do we women turn to? Yes. It seems as if complaining to police against any harassment or molestation has become a crime. And when a woman goes to the police to complain, she becomes a victim of innuendos, insinuations and snide remarks, or worse still, she is trashed by black and blue. I can recall any number of such instances. A young woman in Punjab was trashed in full public view yes. when she complained about sexual harassment. How long do we women have to suffer such police brutality is my question, you know. Yes, thanks very much, Mr. That's a question we're also putting out tonight on Speak Our India that have women become the soft target of policemen and also what action should be taken against such uh, brutal cops. Priya is still with us. Priya, I want to understand from you that when we talk about uh, politicians and we talk about laws and we talk about stringent measures, what are the women politicians in our country doing? Aren't they looking at all of this? We have, we have women sitting at the most powerful positions today in our country. No, absolutely right. In fact, I was going to come to this topic. In fact, what is police brutality is one thing, but what goes hidden and is equally criminal is police apathy. They are the ones who are there to help us. This is their task. For instance, after the horrific rape case in Delhi, yes. the Delhi chief minister, a woman, made a big political noise and said, oh, I am setting up a special cell for women. I like to tell you what happened two nights ago to a friend of mine. She was being stalked by a man who was giving obscene calls. She called up 100. She was asked to call the special cell. She called the special cell. They bounced the ball back into the... Uh, Call 100. The whole night, that's all she was doing. So, this is the people who are supposed to help us, and this is the answer we get. Either they ignore us or they beat us. Or the systems that they talk about are mere lip service and not really being executed the way they should have been. So, perhaps a lot more needs to be done, even on ground. Now, I, I want to come back to the question I asked you, you know, about. Uh, I, I, I sometimes wonder, you know, are, are women politicians are really not looking at what's happening in the country? They are the people who are in power to really bring about a change to bring about a difference they have been elected by people we have women chief ministers across states isn't it sad uh, uh, Priya to see the state of affairs no absolutely I mean what have they done even in parliament you hear them they make the right noises when the cameras are on but what happens after that they just cite statistics they say we are doing what we can the ball is in the police commissioner's court or in the court itself supreme court or they set up a committee that's all our politicians can do for instance home minister rpn singh did one good thing he went on a bus incognito after the delhi rape and he took the route from western Kunz to delhi to see the dangers on the route now that is the kind of positive action that i would like to see from our politicians yes nobody does that anymore yes absolutely i want to bring in mr joseph now who joins us from hyderabad mr joseph go ahead speak your mind out on this very sensitive uh -huh. issue I was seeing this program and this repetitive of this slide and 
and uh, I'm really feeling that it's not men. I mean, they are gay people or hijras in that Indian sense. Now, these are not people. People. They are not human beings. They should be like. Uh, they should be really punished very severely for this. All right, Mr. Joseph. Yes, we also expect very tough, brutal action against them, and that's why the questions we are putting out tonight to all our viewers: Have protectors of law become predators? Have women become the soft target of the police? Aya, what action should be taken against such brutal cops? The telephone lines are open. If you are watching us, do call us on the show and tell us what you think. Also. Priya, when we talk about the anti-rape bill, the point is that this particular story that we are tracking today actually stems from the fact a six-year-old girl was raped and the family alleges then she was murdered. Really, the, the, the anti-rape bill which saw such a brouhaha in the parliament has, has no effect at all on ground. No, it's not being implemented. I mean, it's still in the past things. People are saying we will do it, but at the ground level, you know, a lot has to be done. You cannot just pass a judgment or a piece of paper. You have to implement a better police force, give them numbers and also give them sensitivity, give them better training because this is not the kind of action we want from our police uh, forces. So you have to do two things. One, yes, to recruit new numbers, it will take a lot of time. Fine. But at least deal with the ones you have, improve their quality, make them more sensitive, tell them not to beat the women when they come to report. These are victims. If mother has just lost a child who was raped. Absolutely. And look at the treatment she's got from the police. What she's, where is she going to go now? I would like to know. Has Akhilesh Yadav said anything? Has he offered her any succor? Who does she go to? Does she go to the Home Minister, Shinde, who has no answers anyway? I mean, I would not go. If I was an ordinary citizen, which I am, I would not go, uh, being maltreated. I would not go to Shinde. I would not know whom to go to. The Home Minister doesn't inspire confidence. The State's Chief Minister doesn't inspire confidence. Whether it is Sheila Dikshit or Akhilesh Yadav, there is not one Chief Minister I can say that, yes, I would go to that person. Absolutely helpless. That's the state of affairs. And the women, as you are pointing out right now, Priya, that they have nowhere to go but to perhaps face this sort of brutality that uh, is meted out on them via these police officials when they go ahead and try and seek some sort of help or justice and this is what they get in return. Absolutely uh, shameful for India. And also Priya, when we talk about this case in Aligarh, we've been seeing this visual very, very closely. Not even a single woman policeman is in the visual. All of them on the ground as we see today and whatever is available to us in the footage all of them are policemen, all in, all men in khaki. Men in khaki and we saw a couple of them wearing face guards. I mean, this is how you're going to, and lathis, you are, they are innocent people. I don't see anybody carrying any sticks or weapons in the crowd that is protesting. But the policemen have come to them with lathis, wearing face guards. They are protected for what? To hurt and inflict the innocent crowd. That is what is shocking. The whole idea, the training, the basic psychology with which the policemen went out to meet these people, that is then that one visual, you see the way they're dressed and the way they're handling the people, yes. that itself says they haven't come to listen, they've come to hit you. Absolutely. I'm going to take a last call around the show before we move ahead to some breaking news that's coming in. Amina Pandit from Delhi, go ahead, speak your mind out. Yeah, you see, I would like to say that I've been watching your this clips on the TV yes. and uh, what I would like to say that media, first thanks to media for exposing all these things, otherwise we would not have come, we would not come to the light of the day. And second thing is that you see the, we've seen a movie called Predator and when we see all these incidents of rape, it just seems like that um, uh, movie, you know, you're watching. Yes. Now, I would like to say one thing that instead of going just emotional and saying that, okay, leave the police alone and the politicians should give up powers over police, I think we should go for some practical solutions. All political parties should switch it together and decide. Let us give a good policing uh, system to this country. All it's right. Long, long overdue. All right. I mean, Apande, thanks very much for Delhi and all the callers who have called in tonight. Priya, thanks very much for joining us. Really, police needs to be far much more sensitive than what we see on the streets. With that, we're going to wrap up Speaker India's first segment. We have some breaking news that's coming in.